What's up, kids? <clears throat> How's everybody doing out there in YouTube land today, huh? Let me move you around a little bit here. I got a little adjustment to do. There we go. Oh, man. So how is everybody doing? Okay. 10.46 a.m. and I am already in for the night. <laughs> Tells you how my last couple of days have been. Got something on my glasses. I can't see you. Anyhow, 10.46 a.m. and I've already stopped for the night. Hey, Palm Limit. I am in Amsterdam, New York at the Riverside Park. Part of the Mohawk Valley Heritage Corporation. I've got this big facility here, but uh, showers, bathrooms, free laundry even. I don't need laundry done. I just did laundry not that long ago, but I may do laundry again anyway since it's free. So, hey, Don, I certainly am. I'm glad you got on here. You were actually the person I was hoping to contact with this video. So, yeah, I'm here, man. Let me know what time you want to come. Don, uh, email me at alaskacarl at gmail.com, and I will email you back my phone number so you can get a hold of me. But I'm down here at the... Uh, at the Riverside Park, I'm all the way at the, I sent you an email, okay. I'm already down at the far downstream, the east end, east end, west end of the dock, um, 10 minutes ago. Okay, well, I haven't, say, I haven't seen my email, Don, so I'm just firing up my computer while we're talking. In fact, you can see here, I'm just firing up my computer which I don't know if I'll be able to do while live streaming. I do have five bars of signal here, but I don't know if I can live stream and use my internet at the same time. And I'm a little, I'm a little miffed. See, I'm a little miffed. I, uh, <laughs> yes, it would be that finger, right? I was opening up the forward hatch and it slipped and it came down and cracked me on my finger. So, uh, today would be better, Don. Uh, this afternoon would be better. Um, I'm going to sit here for a little bit, do some internet work and relax. I'm gonna, then I'm going to go take a shower. You definitely don't want to come visit me before I take a shower. I assure you I will smell much better afterwards. Uh, so I'm going to go take a shower here in about an hour or so. So after that would be, uh, you know, 1, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, something like that would be great. And is that what we've got? We've got rain coming in. $30 a night to stay here at this dock. I really didn't want to spend an extra day here, but, but if it's going to rain, I may have to plan on that. Plan on early afternoon. Okay, that'd be great, man. That'd be great. That would be that will be just awesome. So, right now I'm waiting for my computer to boot up. So, um, if it's okay, I'll bring my lab. He likes to ride. Yeah, sure, I guess. There's uh, a lot of people with dogs going up and down the dock here anyway, so uh, one more or less probably won't matter very much. So, kind of weird not being able to use my one finger. I'm trying to, uh, to type and do stuff here, and uh, it's hard, so trying to socialize. Okay, how old is he? There's, uh, well, Miss Lily's not in heat right now, so that would be a problem. <laughs> Last thing I need is for her to get bread. Oh, there you are. There you are. I see you. Yep, yep, yep. No problem at all. Bring her. I just got the email done. I'm responding to it now. My phone number is... Thought I was gonna put it out here again, huh? No. Three, five, three. There you go. All right. See you later, alligator. All right, Don. I just responded to your email, so hopefully you'll have that here in a minute, and uh, then we can meet. Uh oh. I gotta scroll down with one finger. That's hard to do on my keyboard. Anyhow's, anywho's, how's everybody else doing? I am exhausted, guys. I'm really tired. 
been a long hard push last couple of days I could simply just not do another day of sitting up there steering the boat in the hot sun and that's what we've got we've got hot sun it's warming up again it's 76 on the boat right now I got the fan going and I guess we're gonna hit like 85 today or something ungodly like that so which would be not too bad if there was a decent wind, but there's no wind, so I got to take this off. I wrapped it too tight with paper towels and electrical tape. Ah, and it was cutting off circulation in my finger, so there you can see I got a big chunk. Got a big flap torn out of there. Ouch. You're getting very close to the Hudson. Yes, I am. I'm getting very close to the Hudson. I hope to be in the Hudson in like, uh, I don't know, 48 to 72 hours. I don't know what I'm going to do. Tonight I'm going to definitely be here. And I'm going to leave. I'm not going to be here tomorrow. I have to leave the dock tomorrow. But it's supposed to rain. So I'm going to have to check the rain forecast and watch how the clouds are coming. There's another lock downstream. Lock 10, 10, wow. When do you get to sail, put back up? Uh, we'll put the sails back up once I hit the Hudson River. Um, there's a yacht club, uh, Castleton on Hudson is the name of the yacht club. Uh, they are about eight miles or so downstream from Troy. So 11 or 12 miles downstream from where I dump into the Hudson. So I'm going to run down to the Castleton Yacht Club and uh, use their gin pole, they call it. It's a mechanical hand crank uh, winch type pole mechanism to lift my mast and set it back into place. Hopefully that'll work. It has to work because I'm broke. I can't afford anything else right now. So money is tight. So I'm hoping that works. But anyhow, I'm here tied up at the dock, spending my my well 29 bucks for the night to stay here um, plug in the electric got the refrigeration going got a fan going charging up all my devices I was hoping to get my garden hose out I've only got 50 feet of garden hose I was hoping to get my garden hose out and connect to the water line but the water line connection is like way down there, a long ways from where I'm at. So there's no water up at this end of the dock. So that's not going to happen. But I'll walk down there later on with my water jugs and, uh, and just fill my water jugs. I've got five or six gallon jugs I need to refill. So and as far as Lily is concerned, I'm still in fresh water here. So I can just dump her bucket in the, in the river and pull her up some some water I'm actually in the Mohawk River right now I'm not uh, well I'm on the Erie Canal but I'm in the Mohawk River and you know it was a real shame I was watching uh, for some time now they were talking about this really cool uh, old um, river uh, ruins and you know mechanisms and stuff back upstream about an hour or so ago and I was going to plan on stopping there and walk around and film some of that and even try to do a live stream if there was no cell coverage. There wasn't any cell coverage, but still, I was still going to stop anyway. The problem was there was no place to dock. There was absolutely no place to tie up, um, which was really shame. I was kind of hoping to go ashore there, but uh, I guess I could have anchored. But the wind was blowing pretty hard out there at the time, and I you know, just didn't trust anchoring my boat not being on it yet without me around. Um, Especially when there's a two knot current flowing down so so I didn't I had to pass it but I, I was really kind of hoping to film that today and I I missed out on that so I was a little I was a little bummed about not getting that done but so so far so good hot dry and thirsty that's the order of the day okay a uh, nice day to visit a dock nice nice oh nice day to visit a dock when I'm in Cooperstown, I often eat lunch at the docks at Waterfront Park. And his phone number. Okay, Peaceful Don, I got your I got your email. So we're all good. All good. We are fine as frog hair and twice as jumpy. So now earlier I did a live stream as I was going through lock twelve. 
and I and I made a misstep. I someone asked me if that was the last lock before I got to Amsterdam, and I said yes, and it was not. Uh, I, I was thinking I was in lock 11 for some reason, but no, I had to go through lock 12 and 11 today. So right now I am east of lock 11 in the town of Amsterdam at the Riverside Park. So trying not to get too badly waked here. A lot of these boats that are traveling west, some of these big yachts, they just, they just go flying through here and slam us up against the dock. They have... Uh, they have little or no concern whatsoever for us we little lowly boats tied to the dock here so and i am way behind on catching up stuff on my computer i'm uh so i'm going to be kind of rude here and multitask a little bit while we're doing the live stream making hay while the sun shines but i guess missing out on a couple of live streams sort of caught me off guard and and uh, I don't know broke my momentum I guess for lack of a better word I, I broke my momentum so uh, so Johnny Hag is commenting on another video <laughs> hey this could be fun I, I know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna have fun I'm going to respond to people's comments on the live stream I don't think I've ever done that before. That could be a lot of fun. But let me just first put this information in here. 43,763. Man, my views are getting up there nicely. They really are. 107.6. Hold on a minute. Move that. Get that down there. Change that. 107.6. Okay. Got that all updated. So let me go ahead and do this. Let me go ahead. I'm going to go to my comments. I'm going to read the comment. And then respond while I'm doing the live stream. So Johnny Hag, three minutes ago, commented on my eastbound and down video. He says, on the days when you're doing a really short run, why not slow the boat down and troll for a while? Um, because. Because. When. I do a short run. It is because I could spell I am exhausted and just want to get there. And that's what it is. So when I'm doing a short run it's because I'm exhausted and I just want to get there. I'm I'm, I'm not thinking about it done. So Mama 3 asks what does it normally cost? What does it normally cost to go through a lock? Okay, the canal normally costs seventy-five dollars for a boat my size. Boat my size. However, this year the canal is free due to the anniversary. Due to the anniversary. All right. So that's why it's free this year. Rhonda said, don't you have food on the boat? It's a lot better for you than junk you're eating today. Rhonda, I don't need... I don't need... A nag. Sorry, Rhonda. Don't mean to be rude, but... Sorry. Sorry to be rude. There's just no nice way of saying that. I don't know how else I could say that nicely, but my diet's just fine. Hey, you know what? Yesterday <clears throat> I had um, a burger. Don, it's the park next to the river. Yes, it is. Just doing what you told me to do. Well, I didn't ask you to nag me about my diet. Livestream actually works better for Carl. You get a highlight every day instead of waiting for days like other videos. Yeah, I think so. We're parking in the maps and no find. Is that the right name? Um, okay, hold on, Don. Oh, I'm on my phone. Um, it's the Riverside Park. Try Riverside Park in Amsterdam. 
that might make a difference. Show us your surroundings when you get a chance. Yeah, Palm, I will here in a little bit. Let me uh, let me finish responding to these comments, and I'll stick my head. I'll, I'll play the uh, the the Puxatani fill. I'll stick my head out of the hole and see if there's a shadow, and I'll show you guys around the park here a little bit. So, River Link. I think that's it. River Link. Um, yeah, Riverside or River Link or something like that. I don't know. Rhonda says, I was in ER all day. Sorry, you're having troubles being alone. I had to plan ahead. Start the ice maker then. To you can't start the ice maker until after the generator started. I start the generator, then I would have to come down below and start the ice maker. You can't start it ahead of time. Leave me be asked if you were still on the canal. Bobby had no clue and continued on. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, Bobby doesn't know all my whereabouts, but yes. I'm still on the canal, but hopefully not for too much longer. Okay, so yes, it does. That's all I'm going to respond to that. Yes, it does. Thank you for not eating your live stream. Well, Robert, that's rude. rude. That's rude. I enjoy multitasking. There you go, Robert. I enjoy. I can't spell worth a darn. I enjoy multitasking. <laughs> and Robert probably thinks I'm rude while I'm eating while doing a live stream, but it is what it is. Would be nice to be under sale again. Yes, it would. Yes, Philip. It, yes, absolutely. Yes, it would be nice to be under sale again. I have a sailboat, not a canal boat. Miss Shar says, FYI, notice to Mariners. Yes, I saw that. Okay. Yes, I saw S-A-W. I tried to say S-A-Y. That doesn't work. Bruce Laurie says, Thanks, Carl, for your vlog. It's been very informative. I'm going to go through the Erie Canal for the first time in late August, leaving Dunkirk, New York, single-handed. Fair winds will be falling. Awesome. Awesome. I like Dunkirk. Cool. So there's somebody else going to be following me down the way from Dunkirk. Bruce Laurie. Fender, not a buoy. Okay. Maui Lay. Old Steve Pressure. Popeye the Sailor Man says, I'm sure the guy who donated all the food, booze, and everything else will help you out with a place to shower. Seems like he's stalking you at this point. You know, Popeye, why do you got to go there? I mean, you know, really, why do you got to go there? The guy is a really nice guy, you know. I mean, he actually bought me this cart and some more booze. I'll show that to you guys here in a little bit. Why do people have to do that? Always try to find some negative angle on stuff. Oh, man. Sad question. He is a really nice guy. Really torques me off sometimes when I read some of these questions like that. I'm like, why do people always got to find the negative and shit? Why can't people just be positive for a change? Uh, you look dressed again, sound even worse. Depressed? No, Country Cruiser. Country Cruiser says, hey, Papa, you look depressed again, sound even worse. What's up? My two cents, love your channel, but something has changed. Care to elaborate? Nothing has changed, man. Just tired. Just tired. I'm not at all um, world-class bad. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not at all depressed at all, man. I'm just tired. There's a big difference between being exhausted. And it's a good exhausted, guys. Don't get me wrong. It's a good exhausted. It's the kind of exhausted you get after a long, hard day where you've been doing a lot of work. It's a really good kind of exhausted. So please do the all the time. Why do the... Sailor Man responded to Country Cruiser saying, why do the all the time? I don't know what that is. No, I am fine. So when you guys see your comment on here, you're gonna see me comment. I just responded to him saying, no, I'm fine. But you guys heard what I really said, so. Good day to relax sitting on the dock. That's it, Don. On social media, answering social media. <laughs> yes, Mike C had been very helpful. Can you use the new cart to get to the water? Um, yeah, I could actually. I could very much, yeah, I could. I've got four or five gallon jugs 
I was just going to carry them, but you're right. I could use his cart to get down there. Uh, the cart's going to be really useful, guys. There's a lot of times where I have to walk long distances to get fuel or get water or something heavy like that. Go to the grocery store and be toting back, you know, 12 packs. I buy these 12 packs of um, seltzer water. Speaking of which, my ice maker just made ice. So I'm going to... I'm going to pause here for a second, and you guys can see me make something to drink. So hold on a second. Spin you around. So now you can see the other side of the boat. Oh! And here is the infamous ice maker, right here. And so what I do, oh, lots of beautiful ice cubes. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Loveliness. And then I get one of my seltzer waters. And we'll put that in there and back around we go ah, now i gotta plug you all back in again <laughs> oh man the trials and tribulations i'm telling you guys this is such an this is such an ordeal being a sailboat cruiser living on a sailboat my gosh such hard work i had to plug in and unplug you spin around the table and get up off my arse to grab myself a a Waterloo sparkling water, black cherry. Thank you, Frank Daniels, for some wonderful ice. Ah, uh, refreshing, guys. Very, very refreshing. Now, I could, thank to Mike C., I could doctor this up in all kinds of ways. But it's a little early in the morning, don't you think? A little early in the morning for cocktails. All right, so there we got the whole can in there. And there's my captain's glass full of nicely chilled black cherry sparkling water. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, that's good. Good, good, good. I've been out of touch for a while. Could you tell me where you got the boat again and where you are headed? Thanks. Uh, Lando leaves land. I got the boat in Sandusky, Ohio. I found it on Craigslist. One of those fairly cryptic ads, you know. There was no photo, very little information. Uh, but, you know, it said a cow, 229. I've owned two cows before. I kind of like them. Uh, and so I, it intrigued me. And so I, it was like pulling teeth trying to get information from the guy. But I ended up buying a 1974 cow, 229. And I paid $2,000 for it. Two grand. Since then, I've invested about another $1,000 into the boat. I put a big-ass, big-ass, fat-ass ladder for me on the back so I get my butt in and out. It's actually a dock ladder that I mounted on the stern of the boat. And thanks to my good buddy on here, Joe Peak, who welded up some brackets for me, uh, I kicked the ladder out at just the right angle now so I can, I can get in and out of the boat. And it's been great, man. Out on... Uh, out on Lake Erie, I used it a couple times when I went Chunky Duncan out there, and I went Chunky Duncan again uh, on Oneida Lake. Uh, and man, I'll tell you what, nothing better than just grabbing a bar of soap and jumping over the side to, to take a bath, you know? Um, now, in the salt water, I'm going to have to carry a bit more fresh water on me because you have to rinse the salt off afterwards, but still, great way to cool off and get clean at the same time. So, so I did that. Uh, what else did I I had to buy two batteries for the boat. Uh, it didn't have a house battery or an engine start battery. Uh, I changed the oil. I added the oil. I changed the oil filter out. I had to rebuild the water pump. Uh, I'd have that rebuilt. And uh, pretty much it. That's about it. That's about all we've done so far. So, all right. Let's see. Oh, man. Why was Alouette deleted? Come on. Alouette usually asks nice questions. Rhonda, what happened? What did she ask about? Or he, I'm not sure that's a he or a she. But they're usually a good person, so. Hey, Jared, what's up? Huh, sorry, Alouette, I didn't, I never even got to see what you put up there, so. I'm sorry. <sighs> okay, so Country Cruiser says, not good for a diet. No diet, Nazi, uh, but not healthy, yep. Yep, I don't care. I don't care, guys. What I'm doing right now is I'm just eating one one meal a day. So, who has a hairier butthole, Chewbacca or Samantha B? Well, I don't know who Samantha B is, but 
Hey, John Dolan, $25 on the Super Chat. Thank you, John. Really appreciate it, man. <clears throat> Believe me, I really do. I could use it. I could use it. Money's tight right now. So I appreciate that, John Dolan. Really nice of you. Uh, it seemed positive. Okay. Well, Jimmy Jam was timed out, and I can understand that for a Chewbacca, Harry Butthole reference, but we don't need those kinds of troll questions on here. But Alouette is usually a good fan, so she was saying she respected you. Oh, no. Alouette, I'm sorry. Alouette, jante, alouette. Alouette, jante, alouette. Is that where that song, is that where that name comes from, Alouette? No. You told me once it was from something, but I don't remember. I'm sorry, Alouette. That happens, so. Anyhow, First Last. Now, First Last is an interesting character. He usually is very tough, and he seems to know a lot of stuff, because he tries to share quite a bit. But let's see what First Last has to say. Uh, perhaps you need to rev your inboard up to 2,000, 2,500 RPM periodically during prolonged use. Diesels do not like to run at low to medium RPMs for extended periods. And fuel injectors can become fouled. You may be getting carbon buildup. Basically, the engine it appears to be in good condition. All good ideas. However, my engine is somewhat governed. I can't rev it up any higher than what I do while I'm underway. So check out the phone, cell phones, signal boosters at TA. Yeah, can't afford them. I looked at them, can't afford them, don't have that kind of money. Maybe at some time in the future we can, but thanks Country Cruiser for the idea. Okay, first last says, well, you're getting bored. A few live streams back, you were extolling the virtues of sailboats, spending a few weeks in the canal instead of sailing. I tried to spend sails, want to sail, not cruise, ship up and down. Yep, and you know what? I have spent a couple weeks in the canal. I have spent a couple weeks in the canal. It's time to move on. So, time to move on. And yes, first last, you were right. You said sailors want to sail. So, yep. Six Bears. Now, there's an old name. Six Bears is a guy that I haven't heard from for a long time. Avoid those cheap 12-volt plug-in coolers. They'll destroy your battery. They're power hogs. I'm using an Alpen Cool that I picked up from Amazon. No problems running it off of a 100 watt solar panel and battery. Had a cheap plug in and it was nothing but a disappointment. Use the Alpen Cool compressor type a month solid off the grid for the van. No problems. Got small 199 done big enough for two people. Okay. Good to know. Alpen Cool, guys. Who'd have thunk it, huh? Alpen Cool. Uh, Doug Imbergamo, a guy I trust, by the way, old friend of mine from, from teenage years, says the best thing for that diesel is to run it. Yep. Thanks, Doug. There's an old buddy of mine. Uh, should have been active captain. Okay, whatever that should have been, it should have been active captain, according to Burt Willett. Anyhow, guys, there's some of my comments. I'm not going to do all of them here because it's just going to get boring from you. I don't see any of them that are really controversial. Well, okay, yeah, here's one. Honeybees1 says, watched Bobby's live feed last night, and he seemed uncomfortable when Carl Brook was mentioned on his live stream. He also seems a bit uptight. Great stuff, Carl. Um, there's no reason for Bobby to be uncomfortable. Bob and I are good friends on good terms as far as I know. Um, you know, everybody thinks just because I didn't buy his boat that it created some sort of big drama between Bob and I. Bob knew it was subject to the sale of my property up in Alaska. My sale of the property at that time had fallen through. So Bob's not mad at me, and I'm certainly not mad at Bob. I have been critical of some of Bob's decision-making only because I like the guy and I have legitimate concerns for his well-being. I wish Bob all the best. I really do. I... I, I like Bob. I want Bob to succeed. I really want Bob to succeed. He's helped my channel out considerably. So I don't want, I don't understand why everybody seems to feel a need to try to create some drama there where none exists. But that is what it is, guys. There is no drama between me and Bob from selling, uh, selling doodles. Bob and I are, are, we're fine as far as I know. So. So Douglas says, $2,000 boat, man of leisure, new adventures. There you go, ma'am. 
Paul Harper, buy a power inverter to power your fridge, thousand watt or more. Paul, I don't have enough battery bank for that. It is a monkey species in Latin. Yes, hey, Laloetta, how you doing? Yes, that's correct. That's correct, you told me that. But isn't Alouetta also the word in that French song, Alouetta, Jante Alouetta, isn't that the same? Hey, Trav, what's going on? I, I don't know, but yes, you told me that that was a monkey species. And it does tend to throw people, I, you know, I guess so. Uh, so Eric, Eric Lin, Linthicum, you're both a class act, okay. Eric Lithium says, uh, yeah, Carl, I see how the canal can get old after many miles. At times it seems almost claustrophobic and the inability to see the horizon. Just trees and more trees, just the opposite being offshore and feeling free. Yeah, the, the canal has been interesting for me. Yes, the same as the song, pretty sure, okay. Uh, the canal has been interesting for me. I mean, I, I like the history and the research about it and, and the economic impact that it had and all of that kind of stuff. I like the towns on the east end. Uh, the towns have been very uh, pro boats. Uh, come stay in our town. Provide you know like like where I'm at right now. Although these guys are charging me a dollar a foot, the guys on the east coast it was just free to stay there. Um, and then where I'm at right now, there's very little in the way of facilities around here. So it's not like you know I can I can walk nearby to a restaurant. There's a bar, of course, I can walk nearby to, but. Uh, not much in the west way of restaurant, and that's fine. I really don't need any restaurants, but I just wanted to tie up someplace chill and run the electric for a while. So I really just wanted someplace to chill today, just to hang out, sit and not go anywhere, and just relax and do some of this kind of stuff. So anyhow, so Eric, yeah, the canal can it can get long, and it is somewhat long. But I could see the analogies between that and doing like an offshore passage. Because when you're doing an offshore passage, you know, it's many, many miles of just uh, open water. Um, here, though, I find that I really have to be on my guard all the time. You know, I, I really have to. Uh, I'm fortunate. Uh, let me explain this to you. I'm fortunate because I'm going downstream. So what happens is a lot of logs float in the in the canal. And what happens is one end of that log will sink, hit the dirt bank on the bottom, and wedge itself in to the to the ground. And then you've got this log sticking up, you know, right here's the surface level. So you may have just this little thing sticking up. It just looks like a little tiny piece of floating log or whatever sticking up. But as you get close to it, you realize that this is this big log sticking up there. And if you were to hit that with your boat, it would pop a hole right through your hull. I've seen at least two dozen of those, probably more, probably two or three a day I've seen along the Erie Canal. Uh, fortunately for me is the current is such that all of those are laying in wait for the boats going the opposite direction for me. I think once you're under sail, things will get much better. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, so I worry about some of the some of the westbound boats because those guys could ram right up on those things and do a lot of damage to their boats. So, and there's a few spots in the canal that are pretty shallow. Uh, there's some places that shoaled up. I went through one area where all the boats, all the sailboats, were getting hung up because they all were six and seven foot drafts, and me with my little five foot draft, I just went right through. So. Do they do any cleanup of the logs? Yes, Caroline, but not nearly enough. I, I'm drafting five feet, uh, Lando. Yeah, they, they're not uh, they're not doing nearly as good enough job of removing the logs and stuff. Uh, it's an obstacle course. It really is. When when I'm motoring along, I'm I'm you know left and right, left and right all the time, getting around logs and debris and floating trees and all kinds of stuff out there on the canal. So. Uh, and the entire time that I've been going down the canal, I've not seen them doing any cleanup, except when I got to one lock, I saw them unloading tree branches off of one barge. Uh, but that's the extent of the cleanup that I've witnessed firsthand. I've not seen any boats like on the side cleaning up trees, uh, cutting off the trees that have fallen into the, into the canal. I've not seen anybody in the canal itself picking up the, the debris and the logs and stuff. They they really need to step up their efforts in that, I think. 
think you're getting burned out on the canal because you're running so jad? What? Because you're running so jad. What do you mean jad, Palm Limit? I'm running so hard. Um, no, not really. I, I didn't really start running hard until the last little bit of it here. So I just picked the name because it was the only monkey name that sounds like a person's name, but I'm a he and definitely not gay. Okay. <laughs> okay, Alouette. Very good. Good to know that, sir. We have that straight now. So, uh... Uh, Dan asked, uh, a while back I went through a lock that was a guillotine type lock. Uh, it had doors, uh, opening doors on the upstream side, but on the downstream side it had a guillotine lock. Now this was a big drop. This was a 40 foot drop going through that lock. So uh, anyhow, Dan asks, was the bottom of the guillotine door concrete on the bottom? I don't know because it was still five feet, at least five feet underwater when I left the lock. So I don't know what was on the bottom. Hey, Chief Hasbin, how you doing, man? Sorry I missed you back at Utica. It would have been nice to have hooked up, but I understand, ma'am. Um, so I don't know what was on the bottom. I'm assuming it was concrete because of all of the, the locks that I've gone through where they had the barn-type doors, underneath that was all concrete. So I assume underneath the guillotine was concrete as well. It would make sense, I would imagine. Otherwise, you know, water would wash underneath the thing. But, you know, it really made me nervous having that great big old steel uh, arm. There's a number of places here on the canal where they just have these gates like that. Uh, not a lock, per se, but just these big steel gates that are raised up that you go underneath. I'm always worried those things are going to come crashing down on me, so... Uh, with a third floor view of the canal from my Main Street apartment. Oh, cool. Okay, so Rhonda used to live near Little Falls at Lock 17. Very nice. Uh, Chief Hasbin says, nice video, quite drop in elevation. Uh, running a little hit down highest. Oh, because E6 to E6, five locks, total just over 169 feet. Yes, yes, uh, up through, up ahead of me, I have locks six through two, and yep, there's a big, there's a big drop there. It's called the, it's called the something five. Hold on a minute. E5 through six, they have a term for that. Oh, be quiet. It's just people on bicycles going by. Yes, the Waterford five, they call it. There's a flight. Now, this is the Hudson River, and there's five locks here. Two, three, four, five, and six. And those five locks drop 169 feet in elevation. So that's going to be fun, and I'm probably going to do all of those in one day. So that's going to be a hell of a uh, downhill run. But that was from uh, that was from first last. He's always got good information. So, yep, you got to go through those six locks over a little more than a mile and a half. So it's lock, pull up, lock, pull up, lock, pull up, and, and drop down, drop down, drop down, drop down. So very much like lock 3534 in, uh, in Lockport. So, and so I will try, I will try to live stream again once I'm going through there. If I have adequate signal, I'll try to do a live stream through there. So other than that, I'm kind of caught up on my, on my comments. I'll go ahead and type those out later on. While we've been talking, however, some new ones have come in. Dan commented, nice shot of the falls. Johnny had commented on the days when you're doing a real short. Oh, okay, we entered that one. Okay. All right, so what did I miss back up here in this chat? Uh, when you were under sale with the autopilot fix, you'll be able to multitask more, start the ice maker and stuff. Yeah, no doubt, no plastic, no doubt. Um, and when I get to Long Island, Douglas is going to get on board with me. He's going to help me get the ice maker and stuff. Uh, the ice maker. He's gonna help me try to get the autopilot going so we can get that fixed and get that taken care of. So that'll be kind of nice. Um, we'll get the ice maker fixed. We'll get the, uh, oh, I don't need that notice. Thank you, Facebook. Um, we'll get the ice maker fixed. We'll get the uh, push pulpit welded and get that fixed and remounted. I gotta do a little fiberglass work uh, where that's gotten damaged. Uh, what else am I gonna try to get done there? Think that's it just you know basic cleanup and stuff so 
Yep, yeah, it'll be nice to get down to Long Island, be in and around family and all that. And hopefully I'll be there in, I don't know, a week, 10 days. Oh, that's good and cold, so. Take the tripod down so you weren't blinded uh, when, so we aren't blinded when we're clipped to your shirt. Sun is a little bright. Um, Rhonda, there's no place, there's really, all right, first of all, there's really not a good place to mount the phone on the tripod that's safe. Um, mostly because I've got my dinghy leaning up here against the side of the boat. So if I were to put you up on top of the mast back there someplace, uh, all you would have is a view of the dinghy. It would be in the way. If I go forward and then put you up on the front of the bow, um, I've, I've shot video of that and I've looked at it and it's kind of static. I mean, all you see is the front of the boat. You don't really get to see anything, nor is there any commentary. So it's sort of a trade-off. Um, the way I'm doing it, yes, there are times when you're just looking up at the sun. Great, you're gonna have to listen to that train all night. You're gonna have to look up at the sun or look at the dock wall. I try to keep that kind of stuff to a minimum while I'm doing stuff, so um, I don't know. Uh, I'll try to figure out some other way of handling that, but. And then the other thing is that Miss Lily keeps jumping up and down. You know, she's up and down the cockpit and stuff all the time. And I can't afford to have her knock my phone over the side into the water. So best for me to maintain control of it and not have it any place where she can get to it and knock it over. So kind of, again, why I do it the way I'm doing it. Once again, and this is one of the main reasons why I'm saying it would be really nice to have a second person on board because that second person could actually be filming the live stream and doing the commentary while the other person is handling the boat handling and doing everything else. Then you wouldn't have those t-shirt shots or looking up at the sky or what have you. So, yeah, I understand. I appreciate that, Rhonda. I know it's not perfect. I, I know it's not perfect, but it's the best I can do with the situation I'm in right now. Uh, all with time, things will get better, but I've only got a couple days of going through locks left ahead of me, and then there won't be any more locks to, to, for me to do. So uh, that's just going to be the way it's going to be. Uh, uh, nothing of interest on my Facebook at all. How do you like that? Carl, Don, what's for dinner tonight? Oh, man, I'm not even thinking about dinner. I already, I already had a big breakfast, guys. I had a real big breakfast. I'm probably done eating for the day. So, no plastic 61 says, maybe some of your family can help with the reorganizing before you take off again. Um, probably not. Um, they're, they're my sister and nephews and they've got families and they've got, their families have families and stuff, you know. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen that side of my family in a long time. Um, I saw my sister. She came down and visited me while I was down in Florida. And I saw one of my nephews who came out to Ohio a couple years ago. But I've not seen any of them in a couple of years. Um, so I just kind of like to just get to see everybody again and, and spend, you know, find out who is who, you know. I'm, I'm a little uh, confused <laughs> as to who's related to who over there at this point. Because there's a bunch of them. So I think I got most of them figured out. But uh, I have a sister and I have three nephews. And then those nephews have been married and divorced. And then there's kids from those relationships. And um, so it'll be interesting to put all that back together and, and find all those people and get to know them, what have you. So <sighs> guys, I'm tired, man. I'm tired. So I already had a big breakfast. I'm not expecting to, to go out to eat. I, I'm i really not at all hungry. Uh, I had too much to eat at breakfast. I, I really don't want to go out and eat. I kind of want to sit here and uh, it's going to get hot today. So I'm going to go take a shower and then I'm going to sit here and work on editing some video and just sort of just sort of chill when Don and his, uh, I guess his son and his dog are coming over. We can sit down and visit and chat for a little bit. but. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not really looking forward to going out or doing anything this evening. I'm, I'm tired, and I'm going to have to leave here tomorrow. Weather be damned. Oh, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to look at the weather forecast. Oh, stop. My computer doesn't listen to me, and then it pings like I did something wrong. Oh, show me the weather where I'm at. Come on. Come on, weather.com. Find me. Find me. You can find me, can't you? <laughs> uh, okay, so... I am not in Weehawken, New Jersey. What the hell? Seriously. I told it to find me, weather.com, and it thinks I'm in Weehawken, New Jersey. Amsterdam. A M M A M S T E R D A M. Amsterdam, New York. That's where I am. That's why I use the Weather Channel. Well, I don't have television, Rhonda. So the Weather Channel wouldn't do me much good. Okay, 71, partly cloudy. Yep, oh, 90% chance of rain tomorrow and tomorrow night. Oh, man. That's not good. That's not good. I do not have a cockpit or a Dodger. I'm sorry, I don't have a cockpit. I have a cockpit. I don't have a Dodger or a um, canopy over the cockpit. So... Yeah, it's supposed to start raining at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Thunderstorms, heavy rain. Right on through all day, ending at 10 p.m. Great. Well, Don, I guess I'm going to be here tonight and tomorrow. It's not supposed to start raining until 9 a.m. How far am I to the next... Can I make it down to the next lock so I don't spend money? I'm in Amsterdam. Lock 10. Three miles. Half a mile. Oh, I could do that. I can do that. Okay, so tomorrow morning I'm going to get up and I'm going to move down to the, to the lock. Lock 10. I'm going to move down to lock 10 three, hours, or three miles away and anchor off at lock 10. I can hear a big boat going by. No, no, I think it's a train. <clears throat> I think it may be a train. I was waiting to get wait. I was waiting for the boat to start moving because I hear this big boat. Well, it sounds like a big boat going by, but... No, it was a boat. There's the wake. Not bad. Not bad. Getting worse. All right, all right, guys. So I have checked my I have checked my YouTube. I have done my email, checked my Facebook, checked the weather, did all of the online nonsense stuff that I had to get done. So let me shut this down, and then we will pop out of the hole. Yeah, Caroline, you're right. If it was a train, I would have hurt. Well, I can't count on there being a whistle, but. Let me shut down my laptop, and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a tour of the park here so you can see what it looks like. And then I'm going to end this live stream and go take a shower. And I need another beverage. Because this one is shot. Oh, man, that's just so cool. No, you wouldn't. It's only at crossings. You know this train. Yes, but... Considering a train just blew its horn a minute ago, there must be a crossing right here next to me, which means every train that goes by would probably blow a horn. Carl, is there a full-service marina close to you? 
Um, I have no idea, John. I'm, I'm sure there's some marina somewhere uh, near here. Um, some places along the canal, like when I was over by uh, Oneida Lake, there was a bunch, Lily, get, get, get. What are you doing? You're knocking my shoes all over the place, dog. Uh, when I was over by Oneida Lake, there, of course, was a lot of marinas there on either side of the lake. Uh, but since I've left Oneida Lake, I don't think I've seen a marina since then. Um, so not for the last, you know, day and a half have I seen a marina, but I don't know. I guess I could, I could get on my phone and check, but I can't do that because I'm live streaming right now. So I'll pay for you to stay in a marina for a few days if you wish. Oh, John, that's, that's awful nice of you. Um, I, I appreciate that. Um... Homeland Security probably will want to board for inspection. You know, Charlie Brown, I was wondering about that because I've not been boarded and I've passed like a lot of Coast Guard people and stuff like that, Lake Erie and what have you. No one stopped me or anything. And, and considering I'm driving a boat that has expired registration on it, nobody's even stopped and asked. All the canal guys take my boat name and numbers down. They all write it down and nobody said a word to me about it being unregistered. So, um, John... Uh, I tell you what, if you want to help, um, hit my PayPal for 30 bucks and I'll just spend another night here right where I'm at. If you, if you want to do that, that would be fine. But it's like $29, excuse me. I have to pay a dollar a foot to stay here. So if, if you wanted to help out, do, do a $29 donation on my PayPal and I'll just spend another night right here. If, that would be really cool if you could do that. That would be awesome. I'll just sit here and wait for the rain to go by. I don't need a full service marina. I've got electric and everything right here. So, uh, there was one in Little Falls, Herkimer. Well, that's a long way back. Yeah, I'm making really good progress. So, really good for some around New York City, Homeland Security. But yes, they probably will. No registration. You're a pirate. Yes, I am a pirate. I hate you right now for for. Well, John, that'd be awesome, man. Thank you very much. That would really be cool of you. Um, yeah, I am a bit of a pirate. I've, I've always been a bit of a pirate. Um, if I can get away with something like that, you know, I, I think what they charge for stuff on registrations and stuff is crazy. Like for an Ohio, had I registered it in Ohio, I was going to have to spend something like $140 um, to register it in Ohio. And then when I get to Florida, I'd have to re-register it all over again. So I spoke to the guys in Ohio and they said, well, you don't have to register in Ohio if you're going to move the boat to Florida, just register it in Florida. And I'm like, well, won't I get in trouble between here and there moving the boat? They said, no, you're a vessel in transit. That's the term. It's a vessel in transit. And I'm moving the boat from, from Ohio to Florida to register it in Florida. So if I do get stopped, I just say I'm a vessel in transit. Now, Ohio gave me 45 days basically to get out of Ohio. New York does the same thing. I have 45 days to get out of New York. And almost every other state along the way from here to there it are about the same. 30 to 45 days, you have to either register your vehicle or move. So uh, I'm moving. So I'm moving. So rather than register it in Ohio, I'm saving myself uh, about $140 by just moving it straight down to Florida and then I'll register it in Florida. And of course, when I register it in Florida, it'll be registered as an antique boat because it's a 1974. So it's an old boat. So how much is Florida going to charge you for the registration? Uh, John, money received, man. Thank you very much, John. Really cool of you. Thank you very much. You you are awesome, man. Um, how much is Florida going to charge you for the registration? Um, I've got to pay a tax down in Florida, I think, for when I get down there. I don't know the exact amount, so, but I will find out here pretty soon. So, uh, Okay, we have, we have merch. Certainly does. Helps out everybody. So buy some merch. Check it out. Um, oh, Rhonda, that reminds me. Uh, one of the viewers uh, has a contact with uh, uh, an artist lady who might... Uh, uh, yes, Trav, I'm on a 1974 Cal 229 um, that has a contact with an artist who might want to do some artwork for the merchandise. So I may be getting some artwork coming, uh, and if it, if it comes in, I'll forward it to you. 
um, for you to look at. But my floor of my boat's all sticky, guys. I was really bummed. When I got back from McDonald's yesterday, I had a lemonade, a big cold glass of ice lemonade on ice. Yeah, I'll send it to you when it comes in. And I set it down. I was sitting outside in the, uh, in the cockpit, and I set it down right by the doorway coming down here. And um, yes, John, that was awesome, man. Thank you very much. I'm just, I won't even worry about it. I'll just spend the night, two nights here. Um, that's awesome. Really awesome. Thank you. Anyhow, so what does Miss Lily do? Miss Lily had to go over and sniff the cup. So she sniffed it and it tumbled down the stairs. Boom, ba -doom, ba -doom, ba -doom. It hit the floor and busted open. So I got pink lemonade all over the floor down here. I tried to use some spray cleaner that I have to clean it, but apparently it's still sticky. So I got to, I guess I have to get the mop and bucket out and really scrub the floor down here now. But actually it's not too bad. It's kind of nice sticky. It gives you better traction. So it's your adventure also. Well, John, I really appreciate that, man. You rock. So you're living on a boat, but the States wants a piece of you for what? Yeah, well, they want their pound of flesh, so somebody's got to, somebody's got to collect money for something. So swab the deck. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I gotta scrub the deck. It's not the deck. It's the, it's the the salon, the saloon floor. They call them salons on boat. S A L O N, which sounds to me like a saloon, which is some place you drink. So drink. Maybe I should start drinking. Go take a shower. Oh, you know what? I've got I've got a 12-pack of Heineken. I might just put that in the fridge. Oh, another boat went by. Here we go again. More rocking. Anyhow, I've got some uh, some beer I need to put in the fridge. I might just sit here and drink some beer. That's what I'm going to do. John, thank you very much for that donation. You know what? I am going to knuckle down and crank out like three or four videos today and tomorrow good videos edited you know all the bells and whistles for everybody so salon is the french word for living room well so we're hoity-toity so heineken bridge now you're talking there you go word word i like that trav word yeah put some heineken in the fridge and uh, chill it down that sounds like a real good plan and I think I bought a jar of salsa. So I may have to break out. I have some Tostitos lime flavored Tostitos chips. I'm going to have some Tostitos chips, some salsa, and beer. Now that is a good dinner. <laughs> That's a good, wholesome, crispy, salty, huh? All right, wait for it to stop rocking here for a minute. There's a train going by. They're pretty close. Wait for the rocking to stop. Okay. You guys don't see the rocking because, of course, you're up on top here. And you're just, But you probably see this curtain move a little bit. Yeah, and watch it rain. I'm just going to sit on board the boat and watch it rain. That's right. So, uh, all right, come on. Stop rocking. I don't like getting up, trying to stand up while the boat's rocking. So, uh, no, I've not done any more fishing. So, Yes, Carol, and the train is right on, I'm, I'm right on this little park, and the train is just on the other side of the park. So within like 150, 200 feet of the boat is where the train goes by. See, that's one of the problems with, and again, people are wondering why I'm, I'm getting fed up with the canal. Oh, man, Nash guy, 20 bucks on Super Chat. Thank you, sir. Go buy dinner and some fuel. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, when you get to the west end of the canal, like where I'm at, it's it's just not pretty and scenic anymore. It's not all the little nice dotted towns like it was before. The east side was kind of interesting. You get to the west side, and it's the Long Island Railroad, or not the Long Island Railroad, but Amtrak on one side of the canal, and the New York State Thruway on the other side of the canal. So for the last, like, uh, 100 miles, it's been, it's been train whistles like that. And, and throughway, so it's just not, it's not the scenic beauty that I was experiencing on the east end of the canal. I'm sorry, on the west end of the canal. I have that backwards, on the west end. So the further east I go, the less the canal becomes pleasant to be on. 
I guess for lack of a better term, that's about the best way I can explain it. So with that, let me put my do-rag on here and we're gonna go top side. Unplug you. I don't know where we're at battery wise, but let me swing the table out of the way. Oh, and my back's hurting, so I'm moving a little slow these days, guys. Oh, there's a bunch of people on the dock. Get back. Oh, come on, fan. Get out of the way. Keeps getting stuck in there. All right, hold on a second. I'm going to set you guys down, then I'm going to come out. No, you stay. All right. Obviously, it's bright and sunny out here. So, uh, here's what we're looking at. Here's the docks. And there's the canal, or actually the Mohawk River. This is the Mohawk River we're looking at here. And then there's a big bridge up there. The big bridge up there. There's a big sandstone rock or something here in this park you see there's the railroad you can see the train right there guys see it that's how close i am to the train you can see it right there and hello how you doing dog get down come here get on the boat lily on the boat lily get on the boat come here come here sorry about that she's got to learn to stay on the boat so Anyhow, so that's what I'm looking at. Now, I can't see the chat out here because it's way too bright. So I'm going to duck back down below. Because I can't see anything in that bright sunlight. Hold on a minute. We're going down. We're turning around. <sighs> okay. Now we're back down inside the boat. Come on, dog. Get down here. All right, so that was a quick look around of what it looks like here at the park. Whoop. And just like that, my low battery light kicked on, so, which is why we're not going for a big walk around because I don't have enough battery. I'm trying to charge it up. I'm kind of low. All right, you're plugged back in. So anyhow, I missed some, some comments there. Let me go back down here. Um, at least you don't have to pay to be on the throughway. Yeah, I guess there's no tolls in that regard. How? Ooh, that finger hurts. Uh, let's see, I'm not sure, but most cities require the trains to stop blowing horns after 10 p.m. Well, let's hope that's the case. Depending on the amount of traffic, usually not. If they don't hit someone, it's it's their fault yeah well i'm not sure what the deal is with the trains either i'm not a train conductor nor do i ever want to be so darling dar ten dollars cheers thank you darren dar appreciate the donation very nice of you thank you get lily a soup bone <laughs> yeah uh the big bridge is church street okay well there you go carolyn that's church street so Watching Carl and Lily from Boat Fishing Sea Bass. Cheers. Well, hey, Trav, there you go. Man, I wish I was out fishing for some striped bass. That would be cool. You know, some folks asked about trolling on the canal. You can't troll on the canal. The, the fish species that are available in the canal are walleye, bass, and then like perch and, uh, and crappie. And I would have to... I would have to troll along at like one to two miles an hour instead of the normal six miles an hour that I make to troll in the canal. And I've, I've spoken to some other boats that have done that, uh, that they've trolled. In fact, one guy said that he trolled for the first hundred miles on the canal. Uh, he just did like two miles an hour or so for the first hundred miles, trolling the whole time, hoping he would catch lots of fish along the way. He didn't catch anything, so he gave up and went on. So. So I guess there's a lot like that, but 
Guys, you got to hold on a second here. I'm going to uh, get myself another beverage. So, now the dog's getting all excited because I'm moving. But, I'm going to try to keep you plugged in while I'm doing this this time. Since my battery is getting so low, this way you can kind of, you can see the, uh, the Frank Daniels Memorial Ice Maker. <laughs> well, not Memorial, he's not dead. My last can of that, which is fine because, truth be told, I don't care too much for the black cherry. I thought I'd like it, but I really prefer the lime, lemon, lime, mandarin, orange flavors instead. But look at that big old glass of ice. 80 degrees right now inside the boat. So, I'm going to sit here and drink this and cool down a little bit more, and then I'm going to go jump in the shower. And that'll help cool me off some more. Oh, man. So what do you guys got going on? What's going on with everybody out there in YouTube land? Anything interesting and exciting going on? Man, you should share to Frank every time you get it. I do, Carolyn. I give credit where credit's due. You know, I really thought this ice maker was going to be sort of, you know, just a great big thing in the way. So there he is, Frank. Um, but I got to tell you, I, I really enjoy having it. So uh, I love the summertime. Yep, it is nice. Frank, how much diesel do you, hey, Frank, uh, have you used so far on the trip? How much diesel have I used so far on the trip? I added that up on my on my computer. Um, I think I've spent, I think my total fuel spending is at about $60 on diesel. And um, I think my total fuel spend is about $60 on diesel. And right now I have uh, 15 gallons in my main tank and 10 gallons on deck. So I've got 25 gallons of fuel still on board, um, which is enough diesel to get me all the way down to New York City. So I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm one of those guys that, you know, I dump five gallons into the boat and then I fill the five gallon jug. I keep myself at full all the time. I don't wait to get down to empty and then fill. So uh, I'm doing really good on fuel. Trying to make some money. I understand that, Aaron. Aaron, why don't you comment, why don't you contact me, email me uh, or something, alaskacarl at gmail.com, uh, and I'll give you my phone number, and we can Skype or something like that and get to know each other a little bit. No news here, my friends. Okay, watching you. There you go. Just me being sick and work here. Oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that. Work, work, work. Oh, man. Uh, not too much village pump went out uh, in the boat. No big... Deal, got to work on that. Paid a village pump. Village, uh, your bilge pump maybe? Mesh tarp, an idea for cooling and shading patios. Well, that's not a bad idea there at all, David. Not a bad idea. Eight by 10, $24 at Harbor Freight. Now I just have to figure out someplace to have it shipped to, but that's not a bad idea. Uh, tired of drive. Uh oh, I'm getting waked again. Tired of driving across the country every week. Whoa, it's the big one, guys. This is the big one, Ellie. Oh, <laughs> uh, what was that? Sanford and Son. What was that? He always grabbed his chest. Oh, I'm having the big one now. Oh, that was a pretty big wake. Damn these freaking boats. I had to laugh earlier, just as I got to the dock and tied up, some boat came by and waked everybody over here. And the guy in the boat behind me got on, Esther, that's it, yeah, I'm coming, Esther. Um, he uh, he got on the uh, VEHF radio and just chewed that other boat out. I mean, you gotta slow down, you can't go through here like that, you got you threw way too big, blah, 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 blah. he just went off on the guy. I thought it was kind of funny, but, oh. Yeah, 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 hire him to retire again, yeah. That little engine is easy on fuel. It is easy on fuel. I'm getting about 12 miles to the gallon, so. Playing with the babies, there you go. Okay, you all this afternoon, excellent. Oh, what happened to your parasol? 
you know, I got a biker. I got to get it put up. I have it. Uh, I've got clamps for putting it on, and and I actually just bought the tool. Uh, Mike C dro drove me over to a Lowe's the other day so I could pick up the some tools that I needed, and I got the right tool for it. I just got to get back there and get it mounted up. I really should. So, bilge pump, bilge, bilge, B I L G E. Esther, yep. Uh, can't stand wakes. I always say, real professional captain. Yeah, right. You know, I try to be respectful of other boats as much as I can. I mean, my little sailboat doesn't throw much of a wake. I'm uh, one of the nice things about sailboats is they kind of cut through the water and don't throw much of a wake compared to a lot of these big motor boats and stuff. But you know, some of these guys, some, some of these guys. I saw a guy go down the canal the other day. He had a 70-foot Viking. You know, this is a multi-million dollar yacht. He didn't care about anybody. He just plowed on down through, screw them all, so. Yeah, uh, darn, darn, a lot of people don't have channels. Just because they're on YouTube as, as viewers doesn't mean that they have a channel. So she may not have uh, any content up on her channel, so. All right, not the best speller. Oh, it's okay, man, it's okay. You don't have to be a good speller anymore today, Don, because with all of this, um, all this uh, uh, spell checking stuff now, even if you do spell correctly, it, it changes it around on you and puts it in all kinds of crazy stuff. So, hmm, alrighty then. There you go. Yep. Yep. I, I don't think Aaron has any content up per se, but anyhow, so. Feels really good just to sit here and chill, man. Feels really good just to sit here and chill. We are at, oh, let me give you an update. Okay, we're at Amsterdam, mile 300. Milestone, 300. I am at mile 300 on the Erie Canal, and I just got done doing 200 miles across Lake Erie. So we have now completed five, count them, 500 miles. We have gone 500 miles with my little $2,000 boat. How cool is that? How cool is that? Now, the Troy Lock, which is efficient, effectively Lock 1, there actually is no Lock Number 1, but the Troy Lock, they call it, is at mile 340. So I've got 40 miles to go. Hey, Diane, how you doing? So I think... I'm going to hang out here. You know, I'm going to hang out here and rest for today and tomorrow. What day is today, guys? I don't even know what day it is. Where's my other tablet? Everything on the boat's all discombobulated right now. I took everything into the into McDonald's to charge everything, and now I don't know where I put anything anymore. Huh. What day is it, guys? June 12th. Yes, what day of the week? I know it's June 12th. What day of the week is it? Tuesday. Okay, thank you. Tuesday. There we go. Okay. Uh, leaving soon, I drive slow. Okay, so I'm going to... Oh, Don, okay. I don't know how long it will take you to get here, Don, but I need to go take a shower first. So, if I'm not on the boat, if the boat's locked up, Don, it's because I'm in the shower. So just hang out, and, and I'll be back in a little bit. There's only making tracks, or should I say making wakes. Yeah, there you go. I hate when I forget where I put everything. Anyhow. Um, you know what I hate even worse when I can't remember what I was thinking about? Oh, okay, I know. So I've got 40 miles to go. Today's Tuesday. I'm going to be here Tuesday, Wednesday. So Thursday, Thursday, Friday. I should be in Troy Friday. Ooh, that might work out really well. I might get down to that that uh, yacht club on a Saturday. Now, what are the odds on a Saturday at the yacht club that there's going to be a whole bunch of guys standing around who'd like to help me reset my mask back on? My bet, my guess is that a Saturday is probably a good day to do that. There's a harbor freight there in Amsterdam. Okay. You relax, don't rush. Okay. Yeah, because obviously I haven't even gotten together yet. So I'm I'm still going to be an hour at least away, Don, before I'll be back over here to the boat. So that's right, my boat. 
my boat. Hey, Kenneth. So, uh, yeah, so I should probably be down there to the Castleton on Hudson. Doesn't that sound kind of royal, the Castleton on Hudson? I'll be at the Castleton on Hudson Yacht Club. Uh, from what I understand, it's a real fun down-to-earth club. It's not a hoity-toity yacht club like some of the ones I knew, like in Port Washington. It's not a hoity-toity yacht club like that, but I'll bet you there'll be some fellows around Probably those those know-it-all guys that are going to tell everybody how to do everything. There'll be a, there'll be a handful of those guys down there who, uh, who, ow, bounce, damn. Okay, I'm really being waked bad, guys. Jesus. Ah. Just banging me against the dock. Whoa. What the hell? Holy crap. I'm going to have to go up on deck and check my lines after that one. That just rocked the hell out of us. Good thing my VHF isn't on right now. I want to see who's chewing them out. Oh, nothing. I really thought I'd hear somebody chewing out somebody for that, but. My little West Marine handheld's not working very well, guys. It's having issues. You be quiet. They're just walking by. You don't need to bark at everybody. Uh, anyhow, guys, I need to go out and check my lines, and I guess I need to go get my shower taken care of, so. Yeah, this is a wake zone. They should be slowing by when they go by boats like that. Yep, lack any consideration whatsoever, yep. All right, guys, I'm going to go jump in the shower, so Don's going to be in a little bit. Oh, God, I love that ice maker. Thank you, Frank. I contacted the girl about the T-shirts, but I haven't heard back yet. Okay, well, let me know, Frank. That'll be great. That'll be great. If, if that works out, that'd be really cool. I didn't want to announce anything about it until it was done deal, so that's fine. Okay, guys, so I'll see you guys later. I'm probably going to do a live stream later this evening, depending on what time Don and them leave. Um, hopefully about 7 o'clock I'll do my regular live stream since I've got internet here finally. So we'll catch you guys later. For all you guys that donated, thank you very much. Really appreciate you hitting the Super Chat and hitting PayPal today. Really do appreciate that, um, especially for paying for me to spend the night here. That's awesome, so... Uh, so you're done with the merch I set up. No, I, did I say that? Did I say that at all? No. No. All right, guys. I'll talk to you guys later. Be good. Be careful. We'll see you later. Bye, guys.